Hello, New Badgers. My name is Lisette. And I'm Nick. Up until now, your store experiences consisted of sitting in on academic advising and eating carrot cake. But now we'd like to offer you a student's perspective on what will change come September and what it really means to be a badger. First and foremost, being a badger means being part of UW's outstanding academic community. Now you wouldn't be here if you weren't very successful in high school. However, there are some big differences between high school and college academics. One major difference is the learning environment. In high school, you were probably used to having classes with about 20 people. However, come fall, you will have lectures in rooms like this. We are currently in a lecture hall in Van Vleck Hall that can hold up to 400 students. In class sizes this large, the professors will not have time to take attendance and check in with every student. So it is your responsibility to attend class regularly and get all of your questions answered. What's the biggest difference between high school and college? College is so different from high school. There's a ton of opportunities and nobody's going to tell you which ones to take. You need to figure that out for yourself. College is different than high school because uh, the work is much harder, but the fun is much funner. You have a lot more freedom and independence in college, so you have to make decisions, very important life decisions, like should you do your laundry tonight? Do you want to do your laundry tonight? Do you know how to do your laundry tonight? Being on your own schedule. In high school, my dad woke me up every single day. What was your biggest challenge as a new student? But for real, my biggest challenge in college was being on my own schedule, getting up and going to class and not having my dad wake me up for class. My biggest challenge as a new student is balancing out involvement, academics, a social life, and sleep. My biggest challenge was figuring out which study habits work best for me. One way to get more personalized attention is by going to your professor's office hours. Although it may seem a little bit intimidating, professors can be phenomenal resources and they genuinely want to see you succeed. Today we're at the office of Professor Young from the Geography Department to get a little more information on how you can get that extra academic help. Why should students go to professor's office hours? Well, there's a number of reasons why students might go to office hours. One being if you feel as though you're getting a bit behind in the course material or aren't able to follow everything. Uh, another being if you want extra feedback on assignments or to discuss your progress in the class. Or another, which I think is uh, something I'd really encourage, is for students who want to ask more questions that they didn't have time for in class, especially if it's a large lecture, uh, or just follow up on some of the themes that were raised and have a more in-depth conversation. How often do professors hold office hours? Uh, for most courses, the professor will probably have one or two hours of office hours a week, sometimes consecutive hours or sometimes on different days. But what if I can't make it to office hours? Um, if a student can't attend office hours, then you can always talk to the professor after class or send them an email to try and set up a, a personal appointment. How do you succeed academically? I succeed academically by participating in my classes. Discussions can have those awkward, weird pauses sometimes, but if you're not afraid to fill them, you can get a lot of learning from your discussions. I succeed academically by using my agenda. I take classes that excite me. Study a little bit day by day and you'll do really good on the exam day. How many hours a week do you study? 15. Anywhere from 5 to 7. 30. Seven. Sixteen and a half. Twenty-five. Um, enough. I think it's safe to say that a common concern for each of you is what living in a residence hall will be like. While some of you will be living with someone you already know, most of you will be living with someone completely new. Although it is very exciting, it can be quite difficult at times. Okay, when I had roommate issues, I definitely consulted my house fellow. They're really awesome for mediating a certain situation with your roommate that you feel too awkward to confront with yourself. I deal with roommate issues by making sure that we all put an equal amount of work and simply saying thank you and showing appreciation. Well, I mean, luckily I've just had great roommates, so I haven't really had any problems. Before we even move in, we just make sure we lay out some guidelines, get everything out the way, um, just right off the bat so we don't have any issues when it, when it comes down to it. 
When I first moved in, I was shocked by the amount of independence I had. I had to set my own curfew and make my own decisions. But I also had to do my own laundry, provide my own meals, and adapt to a completely new schedule. I had to factor in time to do homework and study while living with some of my closest friends too. And like many of you will be doing in the fall, I currently live with a roommate. And although we're best buds, living with someone can be a little bit difficult in the beginning. So I'd like to introduce you to a great resource to mediate any roommate issues and answer any of your questions you may have on campus. This is a house fellow, Jenny. Hi, my name is Jenny and I'm a house fellow here on campus. I'll be living on your floor throughout the year to serve as a campus resource, help work through any roommate issues, answer any questions you might have, organize awesome floor events, and guarantee that you're living in a safe community. In addition to the house fellows in your building, your residence hall also provides you with phenomenal academic resources, including silent and social study lounges, computer labs, and tutors and advisors on hand. Living in a residence hall is one great way to meet people, but it is really easy to meet people all across campus. One way to do this is by getting involved in something you really enjoy, or by trying something completely new, and different, and exciting, and just out there, and just great, and stimulating, and... <laughs> oh hey, didn't see you there! Did you know that visiting the Red Gym is a great way to get involved on campus? Come on in! <laughs> UW has something for everyone to get involved. There are hundreds of volunteer opportunities, recreational sports, Greek life, and over 800 student organizations. The Red Gym is home to the Center for Leadership and Involvement, which puts on a student organization fair every semester. It's also home to the Mortgage Center for Public Service, which can set you up with volunteer opportunities, and also the Multicultural Student Center, which houses over 10 multicultural student organizations on campus. How else do I get involved on campus? joining clubs, Greek life, and being very open to people on your floor. Students can get involved on campus by picking something that they really love and just going for it. Also, pay attention to your emails. Your professors send you tons of emails that have so many opportunities for you to take advantage of. Here to answer more of your burning questions and give you additional perspectives on being a Badger are some of our very own experts. How do I get around campus? Bike. Walk. Walk. Sprint. Walk. Bike. I use my free bus pass that every student gets at the beginning of the semester. What's your favorite place on campus? Bascom Hill. It's so college. Plus it's prime time for watching squirrels. The gym, aka the surf. The farmer's market, of course. My favorite place on campus is Camp Randall on football Saturdays. What's the weirdest thing you've seen on campus? The weirdest thing I've seen on campus was a masquerade of naked bike riders. A man driving a moped wearing a neon green thong. Hot. One time I was walking to Camp Randall for game day and I saw a guy riding a unicycle wearing a kilt and a Darth Vader helmet while playing on Wisconsin on a bagpipe. Not even kidding. What do you wish you had remembered to pack? Being from the Northwest, I only packed raincoats. When the first winter came, I realized that I definitely should have packed a winter coat. More clothes, because more clothes equals less laundry loads. I wish I would have remembered to bring more chocolate pudding snack packs. Nothing can bum out your study habits like being dehydrated, so don't forget your water bottles. How do you stay healthy on campus? Here we are at 333 East Campus Mall. Inside, you'll find the Do-It Tech Store, the Office of the Registrar, the Bursar's Office, and the Student Activity Center. You'll also find the University Health Services, or UHS. UHS offers a wide variety of services to students, including counseling. Whenever you're feeling stressed throughout the semester, feel free to come here and speak with a counselor about it. Don't just internalize the stress. You don't have to have a complex workout routine to stay healthy. Um, be active, but also indulge. Uh, the main way that I uh, manage stress and stay healthy while being in college is just to really manage my money. I took advantage of the Lakeshore Path by running and biking on it. Don't underestimate exercise. I really regret that workout. Said no one ever. How did you make friends on campus? I took a FIG or first year interest group on campus my first semester and I got to take classes with the same people um, all semester and I got to develop a really deep bond with each one of them. I met a lot of my friends in my residence hall by just having everyone keep their doors open. By being nice to everyone I met. You always catch more flies with honey than vinegar. 
I meet my new friends on campus by attending Welcome Week activities like ice cream socials and also going to the Night at the Overture Center with them. What's on your bucket list? Definitely to perform at every single music venue that's on campus. I want to start a squirrel watching club. One of the things on my bucket list is to try all of the food carts on Library Mall. Although it may feel like a strange place now, before you know it, Madison will be your home. Someone you meet as a stranger in September will be someone that you can't imagine your life without in May. We want to formally congratulate you on your decision to attend the UW. Each and every one of you was specifically chosen because of your own unique set of qualities and potential to contribute and build your own lasting legacy. We hope that you're all getting very excited and once again, welcome to the Badger family. I'm Wisconsin. Wisconsin.